Welcome to Pandora's Box. That was a horse with no name by America. Love that track. You're listening to Pandora's Box on Aspen Wake Radio. We are here. Yep. We are here for you all now. We are here for you now. You're listening to us on Aspen Wake Radio. Or you might be listening to us on the tubes, in which case you are seeing us in all of our glory, experiencing our visages in all the forms they come in. Mm. Mm. So if you're listening to the radio and you didn't realize we had a podcast, please go on YouTube. Get your ways on Type YouTube. in Pandora's Box Podcast. Subscribe. You can see all of our videos going back. Mm. Um, and yeah. Check you... out TikTok as well. Pandora's yeah. Box mm. Podcast. There's loads of cool little mini clips on there that yeah. are pretty cool. If you don't want to you know, fully commit to an hour or two of us. You've got a couple you... exclusives as well that you might not see on oh, the radio yeah. show. Oh, yeah. Be on the YouTube. That's it. So that's cool. Yeah. So I, I'm your host as usual, Mr. Callum Wait. Or is my name in fact? Obadiah Penny myself. <laughs> Today in the studio we, we have Mr. Drew Armstrong as usual and Mr. Nathaniel Warren who is the host of The Rat Radar on from 8pm till 10pm Sunday evening. That's right. Today we have Flan. 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 And Meringue. Meringue. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Flan, flan and flan. meringue. Flanny cool. flawny. Flan. Flan. Sweet. Flan. Sweet. You oh. have a wet flannel. <laughs> <laughs> have a wet flange. <laughs> flange. <laughs> Your flange is a little loose, I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't you just hate it when that happens. <laughs> oh, so, wow. um, what have you guys been up to? Well, funny you should ask. Funny I should ask. Uh, yeah. I've been up to a lot this weekend. I've been up to a lot. But, have you? Um, Fully recovered from the Rona now. Yes, I'm. I'm back. I'm better than ever. No poor re- little whimpering coughs in the corner. <laughs> no, no. I'm ready to take on the world. Oh, that's what as I want to hear. That's what nice. I want to hear. Um, but this this weekend something happened to me that was rather peculiar. Oh yeah, what's that? Rather man? funny. Um, I went with Josh. Um, my Your brother. big brother, Zuswa the Gold. Zuswa the Gold. Sometimes Zuswa co-host gold. of the Dark Dell on Friday nights from eight until ten p.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went to go watch Spider Man. Oh yeah! Since oh, finally! So, so that was the second time you've seen it, but the first yeah, time. Yeah, so Zeus the second time I'd seen it, but he hadn't been yet. So did you like, like it? Yeah, we'll go. He did, but hold on. Uh, hold on, mate. I think there's an interesting thing with the cinema where sometimes it's great. You know, it's a great experience. You're watching the movie. You're fully invested. Was well, there somebody annoying sat in front of you? Or it's something? Uh, well, well, you could say that. You could say that. Um, <laughs> for for <laughs> one. Yeah. I was still like a. I still had like a bit of a cough, so I felt real bad. So every like, whole time, time something good like, happened, you were like, <coughs> yeah, 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 almost taken away from the moment. God, so we get loads of evil looks. But, people um, throwing their popcorn at you. Well, the people behind us actually were pretty occupied. Oh, they were getting uh, jiggy. Uh, were they just full on getting jiggy? Get, getting jiggy a little bit. Fr- some of the some of Spider Man made them feel a little bit frisky. I think. I've been waiting for your smile. <laughs> Probably not the smartest idea where we sat. So we got the premium Mid-low seats because we were like, you know what, we we'll always get the premium seats. Let's but we were just like on. one one row in front of the like back row. Oh, so that's where all the people go to. But, um, but to be fair, it was a pretty get a bit kinky. It was like a pretty full cinema. So they just didn't care. To be yeah. fair, I have to say, um, although obviously at the age I'm at now, I'm like, come on, guys, get a room. At mm. least go back to like mm. your your room wherever you live, mm. you know, and get kinky there. But, like, I do remember once I went to the cinema when I was, I want to say, like, 14 with my then girlfriend. Mm. I remember we went, to go, we went to watch Scary Movie 3, and we were, like, embarrassingly all over each other the whole way through mm. the movie. Like, literally, I'm talking, like, the whole way through the movie. I can't remember the movie at all. Mm. Yeah. It was just proper, just like, you know, just, <laughs> just saliva and tongues everywhere. Oh, man. The only online date I ever went on. Mm. Uh, the person that I met like on, an, on like an online dating app Plenty of Fish mm. all those years ago we went for a cinema date as our first date and oh man she, she was, was a, like she was, she was she was on top of me she, she was, was just, she was a kinky lady she was she was a leech I remember you telling <laughs> me about that she just like was yeah. no, no and I was like, I'm trying to watch the movie <laughs> <laughs> I just I actually oh. want to know what happens in this movie it was that it was one I'm just trying to watch the Hunger Games yeah <laughs> 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 like, oh, I need God. to find out what happens 
Yeah. Meanwhile, your missus, is, well, not your missus, your lady, your date mm. is just going no holds barred, grappling with you. Yeah, grappling like you're me in on the back row. Of, I'm like, this hasn't happened to me before. Like you're I some had sort a little of cheeky peck every now and again, but yeah. not been like, what? You didn't know if you were like in jiu-jitsu class yeah, or yeah, walked into an orgy or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hard times, man. I just hard thought times. it was a real like funny story because it was it was the way everything I was like, so really... wholesome yeah. up to the moment where like oh we're gonna go watch Spider Man and then just hear my him... brother. <laughs> yeah, we go and go and get some pick a mix, some sweets, some little sweeties, a nice oh, yeah. drink. Just and then both behind completely us, distracted. By I can that. imagine that really annoyed Josh. Speaking. I could just imagine Josh being <laughs> yeah. like, not saying anything, and then after just being like, "Can you believe that they were just doing that?" That was the whole... that was really <laughs> annoying and off putting the whole time. Mm. I was just trying to focus. They did leave at one point. They went to, to the, the toilets. <laughs> yeah, they went to the toilets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, then what? They came well, back they again. And, yeah, they left and came back a couple times, actually. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Papa's got a Naughty. brand new bag. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that was my weekend. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And then there was also someone in front of us that uh, had like a water bottle. And was just like rustling it the whole time. Just that plastic, just <laughs> crunching. Oh, I man. can just imagine it. I was saying, though, I was saying to Josh, I wonder if like when you're not. When, you, when you're not because I always go to exclusives really or not exclusive premieres B- big shot over here I am big shot I, I, I only usually the red carpet I only usually go to premieres or yes, exclusives but, <laughs> but I watch it like in the first one or two days you know what I mean if I want to see a film so I deliberately I don't it. do that mate oh, bad move because I feel like that's when people are going to go that don't care about the film no, 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 because I just, I, I don't want it to, I don't want to queue for ages, I don't want to be in a mad rush. I always go about three or four days after it's released, and then you get that good mix of, it's not crazy crazy, because all the freaking crazy people like you have been before, and it's a little bit more chill. At that point, the cinema's only half full, especially considering mm. if you go to a big cinema, let's, play, mm. let's face it, they probably have about six viewings a day. Mm. So, do you know what I mean? So, and then I think it's the best of both worlds. I don't know, mm. I quite like the hype of it. Like yeah. the hype, of, you know, wait, when wait, you're wait. in line, you can be stood like with whoever you're with, your girlfriend or whatever, and be like, oh, I'm excited for this, you know, like, yeah, we can talk about what we think might happen, like, yeah. all that kind of I'm stuff. Just, I'm, just, I'm just at a place in my life, mate. I mean, obviously, I'm 12, 13 years older than you. I'm past queuing, man. You hate mm. fun. <laughs> I'm just about to. Type, no, I'm not. Mate, if queuing to you is fun, <laughs> then you, I should stab you with this fork right now, this wooden fork. <laughs> Mate, no, no, I do get where you're coming from. I do get where you're coming. I just wonder if that would happen. If that I sort love of thing would happen, or like, <laughs> I don't think that sort of thing would happen on like premieres or like early on. I think because people would think, you know, oh, well, it's going to be no. Actually, no. Be I, th- I think that's a fair point. To be fair, yeah. Because yeah. mm. I think if you're if you're going out of your way to go like the first day, you're probably a diehard fan. Mm. In which case, you are not going to be wanting to miss the action. Those people either didn't care about the movie and were just mm. going to go mm. or they'd already seen it a couple of times and thought yeah it'd be quite fun this time i'll go and i'll sort of take it a bit in but i'll also yeah. give my missus a cheeky <laughs> under yeah. the yeah. under the dish cover of darkness mm. Mm. you know home projector all the way yeah it's funny because you don't think about things <laughs> mm. yeah meanwhile mm. <laughs> meanwhile um flan got it all yeah i've got out. hector the projector hector who, who is his trusty yeah trusty his trusty projector. south american projector mm. I um, don't know why he's South American, but um, <laughs> uh, Hector, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. His name, his name's Hector. Mate, you've never met anybody that's not from South America called Hector, have you? <laughs> you, know? you know, he's clearly South American. Mm, that enough. projector has a little mustache and a sombrero. <laughs> a sombrero. <laughs> Juave, the Every projector. now and again, you borrow his pancho. <laughs> yeah, you know, definitely. To grow it in. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's it's definitely cool to have a projector. Mm. But it is funny, isn't it? How like when you when you get past a certain age, I almost just think that like. Unless you are like almost like a bit cringe, like you definitely wouldn't like just gratuitously make out with your date or your message <laughs> mm. in the cinema. Mm. But as I said, when you're a teenager, you just don't think about stuff like that. Or at mm. least I didn't. Mm. I, w- I was that annoying couple that time. Yeah. That time yeah. It's was, it was only that one time. I've never done it else. But that, when I went to go watch Scary Movie 3 with my missus in like 2004, mm. um, which was what you would have been like, what, like one at the time at home? Literally yeah. like a little yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just I just remember me and my missus were all over each other. And I remember when I went with my our mate Jake mm. Harden. And, and like, he was just sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah, he was just sitting next God to us like sake. the whole time. What are they doing? Or we Get were just room. like just, Did yeah. you feel like the eyes were on you? No, mate, I was too busy <laughs> trying to maintain my massive erection. Mm. <laughs> Oh, dear Lord. Oh, what, a, what a way to put it. <laughs> you know what it's like when you're a teenager, though, and you're like in heat? You don't think about anything else other than the fact that you're in heat. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
That's all you can. That's all that your little chimp brain can Good handle. Times at the cinema. When Good you're times. when you're fourteen, that's all that you can. Mm-hmm. That's all your brain will allow you to think about, isn't mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. You know. Mm. Yeah. Or guitar in my in my case. <laughs> guitar in yeah, and <laughs> you know. And your missus. Guitaring mm. and loving. Maybe a bit yeah. of Pokemon. Because let's face it, mm. when you're at that age as well, when you're like 14, like 14, 15, 16, that's when you're transitioning from like silly playground relationships to like more hands-on. No. Oh. Mm. Bit of touchy-feely. More hands-on relationships. Mm. <laughs> and um, yeah, obviously it's an exciting time in everyone's life, mm. you know? Mm. You know, you go from like... We go out with me, yeah, and then you just don't really ever talk to him. Maybe we should ask the listeners for right. uh, for some funny um, stories that they that can would be send awesome. Us. Yeah, because mm. we all three of us had something to say then. I reckon this is something that quite a lot of people have, oh, would have experienced, oh, sure. like oh, 100%. quite funny things happen in the in the cinema. Yeah. So let us know. Let us know what um, what your know. funny cinema stories are. Mm. Yep, get hold of us either on Aspen Mate Radio. Just go on the website and send us a message there, or get hold of any of us. On Instagram, um, on YouTube. If you look in the description of every episode, there's my Instagram, Orksworth underscore Lifting Bard. Mm. Um, Just or, comment comment on the TikTok videos or on the YouTube yeah. videos as well. We look at all of those, and it's always really funny and interesting. So to tell see us what you guys say, weird so. experiences you've had in the cinema, and also funny, just like early relationship experiences. Yeah. Whether you were like 14, 15, 16, anything that you look yeah. back on now and you think like that was a bit cringe worthy, <laughs> or like just <laughs> funny, mm. whatever, maybe exciting. I Maybe remember um, I remember another little cinema thing like that, mm. but it was like they hadn't like gone to, this is in the cinema like down the road. Right. And they hadn't gone to like the back corner. They'd gone, it was like, it, it, there must have been like six, seven kids. Mm. Right. I'm assuming they were kids. I'm pretty sure they were kids. Mm. And we were just trying to watch the movie. I think we were watching like the Harley Quinn movie or something right. like that. Like we, were just, we were just innocent little kids, just trying and, um, to enjoy the movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, we're, we're watching, well, no, this was recent. Right. This was recent. Um, but these kids were like at the front, just almost like riding each other at the front of the cinema, mm. and like right in front of the. That screen. was Drew and, and that girl. <laughs> 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 of no, we were at the back. We were at the back. Oh right, mm. that's right. I remember, I remember thinking like, oh man, I feel like I'm committing a crime by just <laughs> even being sat here right now. <laughs> Like I felt like the like the guilty well, one. I was just trying like, to watch the film. Like you're just a dirty you're pervert. Like, yeah, exactly. That at the back, at least. Exactly. Not right I always at the felt front. like I like walked into their bedroom or something. Do you know what I mean? You are a dirty perv. You are, mate. You're Awful. a dirty pervert. Awful experience. I remember it was really weird at the cinema once. Like um, I went there with my dad and my sisters and stuff. And do you know, just like one of these embarrassing dad things, or like you know, mm. if you were your parents and it's just like funny and like. I think my dad had thought like the f- the movie was over or something, and it was when like you know something else happens after the credits, yeah. and it's like mm. so, so he like stood up, but everyone else was like sat down in the cinema, and I remember he was like really enamoured with everything that's happening, but he just kind of stood up, and then just went like that, and just like standing up in the middle, like everyone was kind of like trying to look at be a play, and then just kind of like, watching him, and, like he just had this like um, like real funny look on his face, like proper enjoying it, and he's going. <laughs> <laughs> I could, and everyone was just like kind of like looking at him like that and I was thinking oh my god dad sit down I can like. I can picture your dad doing that <laughs> yeah I can, he was just I know totally oblivious to the, the world face, yeah. you know what I mean and just like enjoying this moment yeah. like, what was like it? beyond like, 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 like a post credit scene yeah or something oh, like that or like funny. or it was just before the movie ended or something and like yeah so your dad just had the <laughs> urge to spontaneously stand but then he just stayed stood up for like five minutes like really enjoying <laughs> it like, 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 I made my move now it's a yeah. sign of weakness if yeah. I sit back down I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna look like I, I, I'm oh, gonna pretend man. I don't even know that they're looking at me <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pretend that I'm not even stood up yeah <laughs> It's funny, I think uh, like it is a bit of a gamble when you go to the cinema because obviously, depending on who you're around, mm. it can affect the oh, enjoy, enjoyment yeah. of your experience. Yeah. I think, to be fair, I've been pretty lucky like the last few years. I think the last time I had a bad experience with like people I was sat around was I remember I went to go see The Force Awakens, the, mm. you know, the first of like the newer trilogy of Star Wars movies. Mm. And I remember there was like some kids like sat behind us and they weren't doing it almost, they weren't doing it like deliberately to annoy me mm. but like they just kept every now and again just like kicking the back of the seat mm. and I remember Ooh, I was, just, that's I was one, getting it? so yeah, annoyed like, man because you know it's coming as well did you say anything I, I just came, I just turned around like I remember I like, got, got to like almost a bit where I then I just turned around and just gave him like a proper evil look mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean 
I'm like, and then they almost like giggled, but then yeah. stopped. Like, yeah, I could hear yeah, them going yeah. like, like tittering amongst themselves, and they stopped. But like, I could, I could tell they weren't doing it deliberately, but it didn't stop how annoying it was. Yeah, mm. I think they yeah, were almost 100%. just doing it. You know, you know when you're almost like doing like some weird compulsive thing, like you know, just like tapping your leg. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was like a bit like that. But mm. obviously, when it's it's all right if it's not affecting anyone. Mm. Mm. Like if you're tapping mm. your leg under the table, nobody. You know what I mean? You're Time not affect, you're not affecting anyone. But mm. if you're then kicking someone at the back of someone's chair, like that's mm. that's annoying. Do you remember Nathaniel? Uh, not Nathaniel Uh-oh. Warren. You're Nathaniel Uh-oh. Warren. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> you're Nathaniel Warren. No, who's Nathaniel. Um, <laughs> Naffa from school. Nathaniel Myers. Oh, Nathaniel Myers. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> but um, I remember I went to the cinema with him once to watch something, or he, and and like someone got really annoyed with him in the cinema. I can imagine. <laughs> he like he like he he was doing this thing where he just kept moving on his chair like this, like like kept <sighs> he kept doing that, oh, and then he'd go like that, yeah, and then he'd go like that again and just like and he, and he just like kept doing that like the whole whole movie like couldn't get comfortable yeah and the guy next to him was like will you stop moving <laughs> and that's like oh yeah. I thought that was oh, funny man. as well so I'm like someone who who gets like real annoyed at the cinema if people are being like loud so much so that I tell my girlfriend like not to eat in the cinema yeah again that's something that reminds me of your brother Josh because Josh mm. is very much like that oh I remember yeah. even like with some popcorn. Don't sort of chew I remember in front like, of me. Like, rustling around. I remember like see like I don't mind like it, not obviously like often, but if something like major happens in the movie, then I might turn to like the person I'm sitting next to and be like, "Whoa!" Mm. I remember when mm. I was oh, like, cinema with Josh. A lot, like don't annoying. don't don't do that with Josh. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that. With I did Josh. recognize. Do you know what I recognized that when watching Spider Man with him? Yeah, because we were watching it and like <laughs> the big thing happened, and I like turned to like see his and reaction because like, I'd already seen it, <laughs> and he was just like dead set, not like looking didn't look at you like whoa. No, no, no. He's like, I'm not even going to acknowledge not you. Not smiling, <laughs> just like yeah. <laughs> I think everyone's gotten like That's an really allowable funny. quota, like maybe like five times in a movie. It's like it's allowed. To, mm. Like you're allowed to look mm. at the person you're with and go like, "Whoa!" Or like, mm. "That was cool." My Something girlfriend like did it as Spider Man, and nothing like in particular happened. Yeah, there was just like a moment where she like tapped me and was like, and I went. <laughs> I, was, I was not happy. Shut up, woman. Yeah. So I've got I've got one more funny experience that happened at the cinema as well. Right. Um, right. I went with my brother Jake, and talking of like being serious at the cinema, Jake's like number one. Is he? Like he, he's an angry man. At the he's cinema. like si- <laughs> as as no nonsense as Josh, but with attitude. Mm. Yeah, but with added attitude. Well, he'd he'd like if anything was going on, he'll stand up and say something. Yeah, oh like yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah. we went to watch Goosebumps, and this is this is so long ago now. We went to watch Goosebumps, but um, we were watching it, and like he hit the whole running joke is that every time he goes to the cinema he gets like the worst people around him like, <laughs> making, making a mess he's always like angry whenever i see him coming yeah, back yeah, to the yeah. cinema and um he's these, always ang- i love that like, jake's always angry when he gets to the yeah, cinema that's it's brilliant. very funny i've got to say but um there were these kids like with their fla- turning their flash on and like running oh, up and down that past us and everything me, and we're getting mad at this point we're like oh, so you man, were with what's him going on? you were with him at the cinema yeah and was then, it, who was it just you and him just me and him right. and um i think he like stood up to have a look and I and like sort of sat back down and was like, oh. Mm. And then I like stood up and like all the paramedics started running in. And this like woman was having like a seizure or something behind us. Whoa. What? And Jacob like had a go at her? No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. He'd no. caused the seizure. <laughs> yeah. No. Imagine that. Someone was obviously Jake's like, excuse me, I'm paid, I'm paid to watch the cinema. Oh, man. To watch this movie. Can you do that elsewhere, please? Yeah. <laughs> It's just such a thing of like feeling guilty because you see these like kids running back and forth and you're like, oh, these idiots these running, running back and forth. Scallions. Yeah. And then you realise like, their poor mum <laughs> yeah, has like, like had a yeah, seizure and these kids something. are like, yeah, are, like terrified. Or whatever. Yeah. Oh, man. oh man, poor kid. You know, Jake's just like literally about, there, about to <laughs> choke slam them right in the <laughs> middle of the like steps like the aisle. Like, oh. Yeah, that's pretty savage. Josh told me a story of you and him when you went to the cinema. <laughs> of you going in and like not being able to find your seat. Oh, um, no, <laughs> no, it was Josh that sat in the wrong place. That's not uh, what he said to me. A hundred percent. I would I would openly admit it. Right, so. And then we, didn't he just watch the whole movie yeah. just in that other place? Yeah, so, so didn't even watch I it sat in the right place and Josh didn't, but Josh went in there and I went to the toilet and I was just like, oh, I'll mm. meet you in the cinema. So I went and sat in the seat and there was just an empty seat next to me the whole time. <laughs> we went to go watch... Um, what was it? The um, the, the latest Chronicles of yeah, Broly, oh, the, the yeah. Broly movie, like the latest yeah, yeah, Broly, yeah. the legendary Super Saiyan, whatever it was called. Mm. And then, um, so every every time there was almost like a bit where 
You it wanted like, to do that turn bit where you it was to go, bright. Oh! It no. was bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every time there was like a scene where it was bright, I was like sort of look around, like trying to look for him. And I started like thinking all sorts of stuff. Like, I was like, maybe he's gone. I was wrong, like, I was like, no, no, no. I didn't think I was. But I was thinking like. Did something really bad happen to him like while I was in the toilet? Do you know what I mean? Like I was like, what you know, like every now and again you'll hear like some freak thing about like some, <laughs> about some like guy in their like late twenties like having a heart attack and it's like really rare, but it happens. Mm, mm, mm. I thought, imagine how bad it would be. Imagine like because obviously I've known your mum like all my life, how bad it would look. Like <laughs> if like Josh <laughs> was the film. Josh was like there picking his pick and mix while I was oh, in the John <laughs> and like he'd had a heart attack and rather than go to Musgrove with him, which was literally just down the road, <laughs> I had just, I just, I just, just like, nah mate, I'm not missing this. <laughs> and I'd like, you know, my oldest friend was just like, so I was thinking like, all sorts of things, man. I was like, where the hell is he? And then yeah. right at the end of the movie, then like, just, like, a couple of aisles behind me, he was just like, all right, mate. <laughs> and then he said it was like, he was proper laughing because every single time that there was like a bright moment, he'd just see me he'd just suddenly go like, <laughs> like looking around <laughs> but Joshua Mark Aist it was you that sat in the wrong seat not me <laughs> mm. you dastardly villain because the way you told me was that he'd gone to like the premium seats we were I was we were both in premium seats oh, we paid for right. premium seats yeah 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 he, so said, I, he said he watched you come in and like stand there for like five minutes just like surveying the room before he <laughs> no no because and, and yeah down. well because I was like trying to like, look for Josh mm. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, I made sure I was I was sat in the right seat. <laughs> I will go to my freaking deathbed on that. You'll, you'll find those you kept those tickets in your wallet. Mate, I'm gonna look no, no, obviously not. I have I definitely <laughs> didn't have the tickets, but hundred and ten percent, guys, I would literally bet my house on it. Mm. I was sat in the right seat. What I think's funny is that Josh didn't Josh saw you. <laughs> yeah. He didn't move. I know. You were the one that was looking like, where is he? But in the whole time, he was just watching like... <laughs> I thought that. I thought that as well. Like, you know, so it was like, we, it was almost like we went to the cinema as friends, but then just sat in different places. Like, how, how weird is that? How weird is that? It's like, even if, even if he was in the right seat, the, the, the normal thing to do would probably just be moved to where you were. Mate. That's funny. Mate, he Very wasn't. funny story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is hilarious. <laughs> anyway, listen to a track now. This is a little Towns Van Zandt double bill. This is Lungs by Towns Van Zandt, which is ironic because of the whole COVID situation. Mm. So ironic. But do you, do you, do you know that? how big mooses are? Mate, they're fucking massive. They're fucking giant. They're mahoosive. They're it's fucking crazy. giant. It's crazy. I yeah, saw like a like video tanks, of a moose. It's like, yeah, it's like double the size of like a big car. Yeah. yeah they're like Huge. Tanks, yeah. yeah, they're tanks. They're the largest um, land mammal in North America. Ah, in the whole of US, in the whole of the US and Canada. See if someone, if someone like said to me, "How big do you think a moose is?" I'd probably say that the size of like a deer. No, mm. they're no. huge. No, 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 no. It's like if if like let me think about this. What's a good way to describe this? If like Rona was a deer, mm. then like a moose would be like my dad. <laughs> 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 and by Rona, it doesn't mean coronavirus. It means this little lady called Rona. That, Who's that the head of HR? That, yeah, <laughs> lovely lady, by the way. Shout out Rona. Mm-hmm. Good crack. But Rona's like what, like four foot eleven or something, right? And like you know, petite lady. Whereas my dad is like a, a juggernaut. Mm. You know, where a man once stood, and now in his place there is a juggernaut. <laughs> if my old man ran into a brick wall. I don't know who would be more mm. damaged. The movable wall. force. Yeah, hitting an, an, an unstoppable, unstoppable, lock. No, it's an unstoppable force. I'm so moving object. object. That yeah, old, yeah. that old cracker. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, big, big animal. Yeah, big ass, man. <laughs> big big old animal. animal. Big yeah, it's animal. a big old animal. Well, we can talk about moose if you want a little bit. <laughs> Do you want to talk about moose? I don't know anything else other than they're pretty big. We can talk a little bit about moose. I'll, I'll show you the video in the podcast. Yep. Look at that. Yeah, big old beast that is. Yeah, man. A huge, huge. animal. Brock Lesnar hunts moose up in Saskatchewan, Does he? and he says that he weighed he weighs the um, just out of interest. He said he weighed its guts. Mm. He like <sighs> when he when he like gutted the animal when he butchered it. He like because he strung it up on a tree and then he like gut. You have to gut the animal, obviously. Yeah. That he, said, he said that he said he weighed the guts just out of interest, and the guts alone were two hundred and twenty pounds. <sighs> so the guts alone were like a bit heavier than I am now. Mm. <sighs> That's mad, isn't it? He's That's an cool. animal, though. Like like he's a, yeah, he's oh, different. He's a fucking beast, man. Mm. He's a fucking mm. beast. Was he heavyweight champ? UFC. Yeah, he was UFC heavyweight champ. He's been NCAA Division One mm. heavyweight champion wrestler. So that's like real wrestling, mm. you mm. know, like actual real competitive wrestling. 
Um, obviously WWE champion. Um, mm. Yeah, but still cool. Mm. Still cool. Very cool. Basically, there's, very, very there's cool. nothing that he's ever done where he hasn't been like the top dog of whatever endeavor he's yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. Have you seen that video where he like broke his neck? He's in like WrestleMania against. It's Kurt a good Angle. thing he's got such big traps because that's what saved him. Otherwise, he could be paralyzed. Yeah, because he what, did what's... like a, he did like a moon salt, didn't he? No, no, no. Onto... He did what's called um, oh, what's it? it's called a. I think it's a moon salt. Nah, well, the jump off the top ring where you like nah, go backwards. It's not a moon salt sort of thing. It's similar to a moon salt. He did what's known as a. Oh damn it! What's it called? <laughs> I'm gonna have to look it up now. It's um, it's not it's it's not a moon salt. It's called a moon pepper. Yeah, <laughs> Brock Lesnar top rope move. Top rope. So he like lands on his head and like snapped his neck. Well, Did yeah, he, like finished the match. Though? What's yeah? What I was gonna say. What's even more crazy is that after that happened, he like nearly like he like blacked out temporarily because obviously the trauma that had mm. been done to his head and his body. Woke back up, carried on the match, and then freaking F five Kurt Angle. So he like picked up like a two hundred and fifty pound man over his head, mm. freaking F five him, and then won the match. Crazy. He what could have caused some long term damage with that, really, couldn't he? I said it's such a good thing that he had mm. such thick musculature in his neck and everything, because otherwise he would have probably snapped his neck like a twig. But yeah. luckily, he had such a such shooting star press. That's what it's called. Yeah, it's called a shooting star yeah. press. Yeah, that was Hunger Child Blues by Towns Van Zandt. While we were um, playing those songs, we were just talking about Brock Lesnar and just mm. how much of a beast Brock Lesnar is. Animal. It's because c- it started off because um, Meringue over here, mm-hmm. Meringue was saying about how he'd, he'd never realised before how massive moose are. And I was saying, yeah, they're like the largest. I can't remember if they're the lo- I think they're the largest creature full stop. Not just the largest mammal in North Big America. Big animal. They're like big, big they're animal. giants, man. Mm. They're absolute colossal creatures. Like giant moose meat. You would not want one of them. You would not want one of them charging your car because that would be like a thousands of pounds worth of damage. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And if you had a little car like yours, yeah, I'd, be, I'd mate. Be I reckon it would just. I reckon yeah, it could just it. ram your car over. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I reckon it could. Probably. But even if like you had like a big pickup truck or something, it would do a lot of damage. Mm. Do a hell of a lot of damage. But we, yeah, I was saying, um, I saw a video recently about. Um, Brock Lesnar, who was um used to be UFC heavyweight champion, he's also like w- I think he's WWE champion at the moment. Probably. And he's well, been he's back in the WWE. I think, yeah, I think yeah, they yeah. just bring him back. Mate, whenever they meet like a super strong guy, they bring him back and he like beats him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Luke was jo- Luke's like was joking recently that he's like Brock Lesnar's like stole my look because he came back, he like took like a couple of years off wrestling, and when the last time you saw him he had like sort of like um like a flat top and was like yeah. clean shaven. Mm. He's come back with a beard he's and an undercut band, and it? long hair. Yeah, yeah, I need yeah. to see this. I'm going to look it up. And since he's come back, yeah. he's always wearing like lumberjack shirts and mm. and stuff like that. But anyway, um, I saw this little bit interview with um, with uh, Brock Lesnar, and he was saying that he like because he lives in Saskatchewan, which mm. is like northern Canada. So it's Saskatchewan. Like, it's the sort of place where it's like mm. it's it's almost like snows like. 300 days of the year yeah it's like very rare that there's not snow so there's big and, it, and i think it's like his nearest neighbor is something crazy like 30 miles away <sighs> so mm. he's like living in the proper mm. he's living a wild he's a, living a wild man existence he's got like a, the wilderness he's got like a, baby a big old sort of farmhouse mm. you know and he's got this massive home gym which is like the size of like a fa- like a factory sized gym He's just got everything he needs, but, you know, he, he hunts most of his food. Mm. So, he, obviously, he just runs around in northern Canada with his hunting license, <laughs> shooting moose and... The shirt off, crawling around. Mate, just mm. oh, the, the idea of him, because he's Crazy. such a unit as well. Yeah. For anyone that has, doesn't know who Brock Lesnar is, as I said, he was NCAA heavyweight champion as well, which is basically, like, real wrestling. So, like you see in the Olympics, you know, when it's... Because I think a lot of people that just hear wrestling, they think of, like, the fake WWE wrestling. Mm. Well, there's obviously real, actually, competitive wrestling as well, so... Brock Lesnar was like the number one wrestler in America. It's called being the NCAA heavyweight champ. So he was the number one actual wrestler in America. He was also UFC heavyweight champion. Which um, is crazy. And he's also got like crazy weightlifting accolades. Mm. Like um, Bro- um, Kurt Angle, who was an Olympic gold medalist, um, said that he saw like, he said that he's like never seen someone chuck around weights in the gym like Brock. But he said the crazy thing about Brock wasn't necessarily even the weights he was he was chucking around. He said he's like never, Brock's never even like specifically trained for weights, if you know what I mean. Right. Mm. Like most like powerlifters and stuff, they'll go on like a powerlifting program mm. and you like very methodically and slowly 
gain strength and weight mm. Mm. whereas Brock was always just one of those freak athletes he was just like every now and again he would just like do some bench presses and he would just bench press like 500 pounds for like mm. 10 reps yeah and like you know or he would just randomly yeah. squat like 700 pounds for like 15 reps he's like crazy ridiculous like, crazy and like no I don't think there's ever been a wrestler who like in the ring even though it's scripted has like thrown around massive men like Brock has so there was John Cena's pretty up there he he's is a strong man he is extremely strong I would say that the one difference between I'd say um, John Cena and Brock Lesnar they've lifted the same people but if you watch them lift them John Cena right understandably yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. understand you can almost see the strain mm. whereas what's almost like freaky and almost like scary about watching Brock Lesnar do it he's like throwing it like He's like throwing it like how you'd expect a fully grown man to throw a ten year old. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. About yeah, rag, ragdolling them. But yeah. but to like people like the Big Show, who's like a legit a legitimate seven foot tall, like thirty five stone man. Mm. So the guy, yeah, the guy that's his name in life, real life is Paul White, not to be confused with Paul White, who's <laughs> 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 also a pretty meaty guy. Mm. But yeah, so yeah, Paul White, the Big Show, he's legitimately thirty five stone and seven foot tall and if you go and watch and back some old footage of like Brock Lesnar wrestling him he's like suplexing him all over the ring like crazy and I think I think until Brock Lesnar did it I think there'd only been one wrestler who'd even like properly lifted um the big show and that was this guy called Bill Goldberg and he's a he's a tank as well he's a unit like back in his day he was like um he was like an American football player and he played for like the Atlanta Falcons and for the Georgia Bulldogs and was like a legitimate like first class top rate American football player mm. and he was a linebacker as well so like he was like big for an American football player and they're mm. all like pretty tanky guys aren't they like similar to rugby players obviously yeah but like you know linebackers are like big tanky big tanky guys and um, a bit I mean, he was like a guy that's a bit similar to Brock just like a freak athlete mm. you know it's almost like scary seeing a guy that big move that fast yeah one, yeah, of yeah. Sort of one thing I always thought was crazy about Brock was that he didn't like go from UFC to WWE no. He went from WWE to UFC. Yeah. So when these and people will have again. been like, yeah, yeah, so when these people will have been like training their whole life mm. to like be in the UFC, Brock Lesnar was just like F5 in people. Apparently he was like almost like a phenom in terms of like, I remember I watched, um, cause Brock Lesnar. Phenom? So, What's a phenom? So a phenom is almost like when somebody is so outstandingly good, mm. like they're phenomenal. Oh, phenomenal. Oh, okay. So, you know, yeah. So, so it's like he, and like a phenomenon, like, you know, like yeah. it's a phenomenon. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah. So he's, free, he's, he's a phenomenon. Free, yeah, so he's yeah, like, yeah. A, he's like a, He's almost like phenomenal. He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's almost like supernatural in the, in terms yeah. of how freakish he is. Yeah. So yeah. um, I think his I think his coach was called Matty Morgan. So when I was when I was a little boy, I used to watch wrestling, and Brock Lesnar was always like one of my big idols growing up. One of the reasons why I've always really enjoyed lifting weights and stuff is because of like you know Brock Lesnar. Watching mm. Brock Lesnar when I was little, I thought like you know. It's just, it was so impressive to me. I was like, that's so cool. And also, as Drew will attest, I did um, often, like, suplex my friends and stuff mm -hmm. like that in school growing oh, up. Oh, yeah. And F5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely giving Drew a couple of F5s. <laughs> mm -hmm. it is. Loving F F5s, though. Loving F5s. Lo loving F5s. Nothing D was broken. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nothing no. was damaged. <laughs> no, no. What Apart doesn't kill pride. you makes you stronger, doesn't <laughs> it? You know? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> but, um, yeah, what was I going with it? Uh, yeah, I watched an interview with Matty Morgan. I think his name is Matt Morgan. He was like his coach when he was like a real wrestler before mm. he went into WWE. So when he was like a teenager, and he said that the first time he'd ever saw Brock Lesnar, he said he walked he walked into like um basically like everywhere like a big sports hall essentially. I, I don't know what they you know like a big gymnasium, mm. Mm. um and like an, and a massive like American high school like in Minnesota like um like gymnasium and it was like you know just massive, um and there was just kids wrestling on mats like all over the place mm. and he said you know like he obviously being a wrestling coach was like so used to that environment but he said he just suddenly just from like over the corner about like freaking 50 feet away over like right the other side of the gym just suddenly just kept hearing bam bam <laughs> bam and he just thought what the hell is that and he said he just looked over and there was this kid he was like 15 but he looked like he was about 26 mm -hmm. Just like the thick tracks like a Mike on Tyson just, type thing. Well, mm. m well, Mike Tyson's ferocious, but physically not as, as much of a beast as, as Brock. Yeah, but he was like, when when Mike Tyson was like 15, oh, he was yeah. knocking people out. Oh, yeah, him. yeah. It's, in that respect, yeah. yeah. In that respect, a phenom, yeah. Yeah. But like, I think one of the things that was almost like crazy about Brock is because of how big he was. Right. Like, Mike Tyson's like 5 foot 10, which is like a decent height, but he's mm. like, the thing, the thing that's crazy about Brock is, as I said, like, he was already already like bigger than like probably like ninety nine percent of men when he mm. was like fourteen, mm. 
and like in terms of musculature as well yeah you know like yeah. thick just one of those guys it's like your man like Beast. what what did his parents put in his freaking porridge Do you know yeah. what I mean? like like just slamming people and he was just like that guy is a freak and he he said that he was just instantly like right we need to get this guy like signed up have the best coaches mm. and then yeah a couple of years later he won the ncaa division one heavyweight championship have you ever seen a picture Brilliant. of his parents yeah yeah what are they like are they are they quite um they they the, he well, comes or? from a dairy farm background mm. so he grew up apparently all of his life like you know um like herding cows and like i can't remember what they call it like calfing or whatever you mm. know like basically right. he would almost like, have to like wrestle you have to like wrestle calves mm. almost right and like lifting hay bales and so he grew up from an early age with like this almost mm. ridiculous like way more physical activity than like the average person mm. Mm. and apparently it was like a very hard working farm so like they they weren't making loads of money as dairy farmers so it was like everybody in the family had to help out so it was mm. almost like when you, if you're a kid in the lesnar family once you could walk you were put you, once you could walk you you're were put, put to work you were put to work yeah and like hard labor <clears throat> but um yeah they they do look like quite big people mm. um you can tell they've all got like thick bones and everything mm. but i think one of the things with like brock it's like you know we've talked about it before you can't you don't just have the genetics mm. Mm. yeah you it's, need to have the mindset as well it, yeah and apparently the crazy thing about brock was is like even when he was like a little boy he would do like 10 hours of hard grafting on his parents farm like you know repairing barns doors mm. and you know manhandling calves and lifting hay bales and all sorts of other stuff digging and whatever his, his parents needed but then at the end of the day he would just do like 100 press ups and then <laughs> find something mm. in the barn put it on his back and just do like 200 squats wow so he was always into like working out and stuff as well from a yeah. young from, from apparently from like the moment he could walk wow. that's crazy and there's like um one thing that he used in his training right up until I think about 10 years ago was that he literally just like there was a tree that needed to be cut down on his parents property and he sort of like sanded it and everything so it was like um, but it basically just made like a massive log and apparently it was a 180 mm. pound log and he would just carry it over his shoulder mm. like that and then he would just he would just do step ups onto a box onto like a big box like a 40 inch box oh and he would just do that for like an hour so it'd be like you know a 180 pound man that's like a pretty big man mm. not quite as heavy as me but I'd say heavier than he definitely heavier than either of you mm. two mm. so a guy sort of in between like your two's weight I imagine you two are probably about the same weight I don't know. Mm. Do you know? Do you guys know how heavy you are in, in like pounds? Seventy. About, about seventy kg. kg. You're about seventy kg. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about I'm about hundred. So I reckon somewhere in between us would mm. be about hundred. Because I know I'm I know I'm like a bit north of two hundred pounds. Right. So what's, um, what's that in stone? Like, uh, what would seventy k- kg be in stone? Eleven something. Very oh, light. Yeah. Very light. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I reckon I'm about eleven and a half stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's about why. I, I thought that mm. you two would probably be about the same same mm. weight, but I, yeah, some, somewhere in between us, I'd say. Maybe mm. like 180 pounds, I'd say is probably about 14 stone. Mm. Right. Maybe maybe a bit lighter. Between right. 13 and a half and 14 stone, I'd say. So like a, a de- so maybe like Josh. Maybe yeah. someone about Josh's size, maybe a little bit lighter than Josh. Just imagine that over and over again. So it's no wonder when it came to like his time to rest and stuff, he was just throwing people in the shop because mm. your body adapts to whatever stimulus you give it, doesn't it? And totally. if you're literally spending all your evenings doing that, it's like the same reason why people get good at playing an instrument. Well, if you spend mm. all your nights just over and over again doing the same thing, like you're going to mm. get good at it. Mm, you're going to totally. get good at it. It's like 80 kg or like 12.8 stone. Mm. Mm. Oh right, so a it's bit like lighter a bit, than I thought. Yeah, yeah, like a bit right. heavier than that still. Mm. Yeah. Do you know I saw I saw one really funny um thing on Instagram recently, which I wanted to talk to you about. Um Mike Tyson mm. and I just thought this was such a funny what's the word? When things collide against each other. Uh it doesn't matter. Collision. Uh mm. yeah, yeah, kind of. A um, funny collision. Basically, Mike Tyson, when he was like fifteen would knock people out or like even 80 even just this whole like time he was training mm. or whatever he'd knock like all of his sparring partners out mm. like so fast so mm. that he could get home in time for tom and jerry <laughs> <laughs> what is that a true fact yeah like that's he would hilarious. go home just to watch like tom and jerry i think that's so hilarious Gotta get my tom and jerry in me being that's like so this funny. beast and then going home and just being like yeah i'm gonna watch some kids cartoons that's a very that's mike straight. tyson thing i feel because like i mike tyson's one of those guys you look at him whether it's in a boxing ring or training, and mm. he looks terrifying. But then it's like, you he's hear looking him, after his pigeons. You yeah. hear him speaking, he's like, hey guys, 
Yeah. Now you don't want to mind Tyson. Nice to meet you. He's got all his like, pet pigeons and everything, doesn't he? Yeah, he loves his pigeons. Big what weed he, farms. Yeah, well, I was going to mm. say, what he really likes doing mainly is just chilling out smoking weed mm. and just looking mushrooms. after his pigeons. Eating mm. mushrooms, yeah. I saw oh, this a bit that, when he was on, a, on I, the I, podcast. I sh- yeah. You showed me. I yeah. was the one that tagged yeah. you or sent you it. Yeah, yeah. and he just, eats a, he just uh, eats a load of mushrooms, I like five grams or something. I can't remember who he's with at the time, but the guy that he's with is like somebody that regularly takes psychedelics. And I can't remember who it was, but they were just like, Mike. You've just done that. Did you just take that one once, yeah. and he was just like, "Yeah." But I think that almost. Like, Gwen, man. I think that you almost shave. like shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on the impulsive co- podcast. I think that he it was like Logan Paul and mm. Mike. Mm. Mm. I think that he, he, even like that though shows his warrior mindset. Because yeah. to Mike Tyson, it's just like I'm not scared of that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Whereas a lot of people, a lot of people would be intimidated. <laughs> a lot of people would be intimidated, but he just doesn't care. Yeah. He's like, yeah, whatever. I, I can just handle that. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's like warrior, isn't it? Mm. But I do think it's mental to think of like Brock Lesnar literally just north Saskatchewan snows three hundred days a year or whatever it is. I don't know the actual, but I know it snows a lot out mm. there. Mm. Just in the middle of nowhere, n- the nearest neighbour is thirty miles away. I, I know that they have no internet in his because I watched an interview with him. He has no internet. That's cool. <sighs> I think they have they they him and his missus share one cell phone and it's not an iPhone or a mm. smartphone it's like an old flip phone burner mm. phone so it's almost like for emergencies right so him and his missus share that um, and if um, you want to make a call on the landline it's almost like this is like v- Victorian era it's hilarious mm. he he's his driveway is like a mile long and he'll go on his quad bike and he'll drive to the end of the qu- uh, to the end of his lane and there's and there's like a phone box that's like especially for his property but it's like a, literally like a phone box and he'll sit and he'll drive down this driveway get in there and he'll like make a phone call to his like agent or whatever or his Whoa. manager cuz oh, you think what? with someone like that you'd have to be talking to your agent he's, and that quite yeah. like, like very he's busy really all the anti-social time and, though he's really he? he's a very anti- like he d- he openly says that like not in a way that like he doesn't mean any ill will against anyone but he's just like look I just I just don't like him being around people. He's like, yeah. I just want to do my thing. I want to be around my family. I want to go hunting. I want to, you know. Likes being in his own space. I want to, I want to hunt. I want to train. And I want to spend time with my family. And that's it. Mm-hmm. And I just want to exactly. live in northern Saskatchewan. <laughs> I don't want the like the crazy busy lifestyle of the modern world. I don't even want internet or anything like that. I just want to be out, bare living. Mm. Like like people would have been living on the American frontier. Like, yeah. Doing my thing. I imagine, I saw a video recently of him and he'd like, I think he won the like WWE belt off Roman Reigns or something recently, mm. and um, he basically got called. It was it, he came back in from the from the stage. I think it was Biggie from the ring. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, yeah, sure. But um, he comes in and he like throws the WWE belt on the floor and like shouts at Vince McMahon and then like walks out because oh, he yeah. like didn't want to. He didn't want to be working. He basically got like called back in for this, and originally he was going to be putting over the other guy, yeah. and then they just made the executive decision. I, I, like, that's, you're going to win. That's that's you that's one it. of the things I think shows how much of an alpha male you are when you're like you can do that to your boss, and your boss doesn't do mm. anything. Cowards like, in the corner. Most because I think like Vince McMahon, who's like the the head and like the owner, president, whatever you want to call it, of of the WWE, formerly WWE. Yeah. He's like, let's face it, most of his employees would be like terrified of him because apparently mm. he's an alpha male as well. And let's face it, he's like a full on executive. He's yeah. like he's a billionaire. Like usually, if you mug off your boss, you're gonna get fired. Whereas Brock Lesnar's almost like he's somehow beyond that. Yeah, do you know what I mean? He's like yeah. somehow like surpassed that. He's like he can mug off his boss, and his boss is gonna end up apologising to him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. How does, like, that's crazy. that's how you know you're like some crazy vanilla gorilla living in the, <laughs> living in the snow somewhere, running around with a shotgun, just like hunting moose, mm-hmm. like butchering moose to like mm. have moose steaks with your family every night. That's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Proper cray cray guys. So yeah. Brock Lesnar, what a beast. We're gonna listen to a track now anyway. This is um a boy named Sue by Johnny Cash. This is a really cool story, this one. Check this out. We'll be back in a minute. Right, we've only got something like fifty seconds left of this hour, so we'll just have a, like a real quick one. Cool. That's like the Joe Rogan side coming through with me then. You know how like everyone always like jokes that if like anyone brings up training or anything like that around <laughs> Joe Rogan, he just goes off on a tangent. <laughs> it's like me getting all excited about Brock Lesnar uh. <laughs> and his various accolades. Bill or George, anything but Sue, I still think that That was A Boy Named Sue by Johnny Cash. You are listening to Pandora's Box and that's from my radio. This is also a podcast on YouTube, so go check us out. Just like to quickly mention that Pandora Box is a product of Aspen Weight Radio, of Aspen Weight as a greater company, I should say, mm. not just Aspen. So, Aspen Weight is a business. 
Um, started off as an accountancy business, now does marketing, research and development. Um, obviously, Aspen Weight Radio. Can you think of anything else, Drew, that I'm I'm missing? Aspen Weight Awesomeness. Any so, business, yeah. anything tech. Oh, business advisors as well. Business, business advisors. advisors. Helping out the little man. So mm. if you need business advice, if you need marketing, accounts, anything like that, Go on Aspen Waits re- tax website, tax advice, mm-hmm. yep, tax advisors or tax returns, anything like that. Go on AspenWaite.com, uh, check out the services, can't go wrong. So cheers, Aspen Waite. That rhyme, man. Oh, baby. Yeah. We're going to do another track now before we get back into the nitty gritty. Who knows what we're going to chat about next? <laughs> this next track is Mama Said by the beloved Metallica. Oh, yeah. That was Over Now by Alice in Chains. You are listening to Pandora's Box. Over here we have Flan. 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 Over here we have Meringue. Meringue. And I am Obadiah Penny Whistle. I want to talk about something a minute, because I feel like it's important to talk about. Um, I say I want to talk about it. In a way, I don't want to talk about it, because it's. I feel like, obviously, media has been oversaturated with um, like anything COVID-related now for so long. You know, I think it's like nice to have a break from it and actually talk about other things, but... Other bits and bobs. Mm. I heard recently that Joe Rogan obviously has the most sort of successful podcast in the world. Um, Joe Rogan used to be, well, he's a stand-up comedian in America. He's also uh, a stand-up guy. He's also a stand-up. He actually mm. is. He actually uh. is a stand-up guy. Um, he also is a Taekwondo and Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Taekwondo. Sort of like UFC commentator. UFC commentator. Um, used to host that show. Fear, it Factor. Fear Factor. Yeah, in America. Um, as I said, his podcast is the most successful in the world. But one of the things I think is really cool about Joe Rogan is he's never ever biased. He has, for instance, he has people that are both on the left and the right politically on his show. He has hunters on his show, but he also has vegans on his show. He has anybody you could think of from any walk of life and he'll have them on and he'll talk to them just like a decent human being and he'll listen to what they've got to say. So everything is unbiased and you're purely, by that system, you're almost getting information as it should be and what i mean by that is like you are getting fed information you watch the show and then you make up your own mind yeah you're not you being both sides of the coin yep, a lot you know? you're not being pushed in a certain way mm. or you know um whereas most you know whether it's like news outlets or whatever most things in life nowadays and it's really corrupt really they're they're pushing an agenda yeah. often you see this they push an agenda so I am a massive supporter of Joe Rogan, um, and as I said, you you watch his podcast. If you watch enough of his podcast, you you realise that he is a uh, a stand up guy, so mm. to speak. <gasps> but um, you know, family man, um, you know, father, husband, you know, good guy. One of those guys. You don't really hear anything bad about him. Mm. Mm. Anybody that's like go on podcasts like cool. say that he's like a decent mm. chap. Anyway, recently um, there's been some controversy. He's had um, different doctors and scientists and people coming out. Um, Basically, um, speaking out about uh, why they wouldn't have um, boosters personally or vaccines or how corrupt it is with the withholding of various information to do with um, the situation of COVID, whether it's, um, you know, over a, a, a real diverse range of topics, but all related to COVID. OK, um, whereas last week, 270 doctors, scientists, professors and nurses among others, penned an open letter to Spotify calling on the streaming platform to create a misinformation policy. The letter was written as a reaction to a recent episode of the Joe Rogan experience that had Dr. Robert Malone on as a guest. In the letter, the coalition accused Malone of spreading COVID-19 conspiracy theories. They also criticised... Excuse me a second. They also criticised Joe Rogan for being a consistently negative influence on the public, particularly his younger audience members. I just think that's so hilarious. Saying that he's a negative influence, I think mainstream media is really negative. And I think Joe, Joe, how could you paint Joe Rogan to be a negative person? He is like the most go-getting guy in life. He's like all about get you know. Helping you, you know, do the proactive things in your life to give mm. yourself the life that you need to be. About taking back responsibility in your own life and putting your health in your hands, you know, rather than relying on pills. Start, you know, start doing some exercise. It'll make you feel good. It'll make you live longer. Mm. It'll make you a better partner to your wife or husband or girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever, you know. Mm. And it will mm. literally make you live longer, make mm. your quality of life better. Start eating healthy foods, you know, um, all this stuff. 
Um, lots, lots of his topics are on like the fringe of society, aren't they? Or like yeah. the, the or like kind of like fringe top topics, and it is like the media doesn't like that. General, yeah. general like media doesn't like that. But so which was I thought was crazy. Where um, you know what topics do get discussed on Joe Rogan? How Spotify kind of like uh, kind of put him him on the app and or you know he mm. sold them the contract or whatever to um play mm-hmm. with his shows yeah so that, you i thought that was really it. cool because i thought spotify is such a big company mm. but now you've got like the other big massive media hounds like actually like get like spotify like oh you need to stop doing that like it's crazy but the thing is right i'm not a conspiracy theorist in the slightest i really am not you know i'm a very like evidence-based guy um but let's face it: one in ten conspiracy theories do do turn out to be true. I mm, think that, mm. that I think there's something dodgy went on with JFK. Um, there was that one that we talked about on the Pandora's bo- box um, podcast before about do you remember Jeffrey Epstein about all the stuff with um, and the yeah I know what you're gonna say about yeah. all the stuff with um, Cuba about mm. all the you know about how the American military wanted to plan to like bomb their own citizens mm. and then and then frame Cuba for it mm. so that America would have a, an excuse to go to and this is like 100% fact mm. this isn't like conjecture or like a conspiracy theory anymore this is this has been proven to be true mm. but obviously if something like that ha- came out nowadays it would be everyone would say oh no that's rubbish wouldn't they? Mm. you know mm. so these are things that actually happen um so i'm not a conspiracy theorist at all but i just do not see how um you know these these people who clearly have an agenda are trying to they're basically trying to silence joe rogan they're desperate yeah. because they know that when you are a multi-millionaire like joe rogan and you have the biggest podcast on the planet and more You've got pe- a lot of influence more people watch the joe rogan podcast than any news channel around the world probably more than most of them put together so you've fact. got more power than the news and they don't like that so basically no. they're trying to get him shut down but the thing is i can understand if he only had quacks on talking quackery i could understand it but he has had what, by this point, maybe a dozen or more different doctors that don't know each other, mm. so, you know, in mm. different walks of life, different experiences from different places in America and maybe even around the world. I don't know because I haven't watched all of them. But different doctors and scientists having these different opinions and facts, talking in a very honest and open way. You know, people that aren't being paid to say a certain thing. Mm. You know, they're not involved in any government system, so they don't have any repercussions. And they are just saying, from their point of view, with their intellect, from what they know, um, facts. Mm. From what they, you know, just from mm. their from their own experiences and their experiments and uh, from their own data. So, the fact that they are just trying to shut someone down just purely for giving those people a voice, I think, is so corrupt. It's like it's like um some terrible man. It's like this overly policed state. Whereas mm. if you if you say anything that is against the mainstream, that you should suddenly be silenced, and that is scary, man. I love it that um that the power is 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 shifting though from like the mainstream mm. news and where people do actually get their information. Like I to I would so mm. much like rather uh watch a joe rogan podcast with these um because he does get he gets people on that are like heads of their fields oh yeah and you know really really intelligent people like i would way like prefer to watch something like that and 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 people do and it shows and it's it is it's like the power and like the freedom of speech and stuff like that they're living in things like podcasts and like yeah like his show so for it to be silence would be like so terrible i think as well it's like it, it like um because there was this article i was reading about it so um basically dana white who's the head of the ufc he's also good friends with joe rogan because they've been working together for like 20 Mm. years or something he was basically asked recently at a ufc like media coverage event what he thinks about the fact that there are all these people trying to shut down and silence joe rogan and dana white said he thought it was madness fair shout out to dana white he does not mince his words he said that he credits he Dana White said that him and all of his family caught COVID and he actually credits Joe Rogan with why they got better so quickly. He mm. said that Joe Rogan instantly hooked them up. He got them monoclonal antibodies and ivermectin, like top grade, sent them to all of um, Dana White and his family straight away and they started taking them and within days they were better. All right. Mm. Now, what's strange about this is that this is proven, ivermectin is proven to be effective against effective treatment against covid and in countries like japan it's even in the mainstream media they even say this monoclonal antibodies are also proven to be really effective in clearing covid out of your system quickly but for some reason the mainstream media in europe and america are downgrading this and they are enforcing just constantly down your neck jabs boosters jabs Mm. boosters right even though i watched um um something with an nhs doctor the other day 
Um, so this was literally just like an NHS doctor working in the UK. I'm in a hospital who said that he personally would not get a booster because um, side effects are common and can be fairly nasty. So, you know, like quite severely ill for up to two weeks. And that the booster itself is only effective for between, he said, between four and eight weeks. Mm. So why would you take something? What, are you going to take that then every eight weeks for the rest of your life? For something that's going to make you potentially really ill for two weeks anyway? Mm. So like, why, seem worth it, to it? me, weigh that up in your head. Mm. Do you want to spend the rest of your life like that? No, I'm all right. I mm. had the first two jabs. I'm, I'm done now. You know, that's, mm. that's how I see it personally. I'm the same. I got two and two and done. But the thing I think is really strange. None and done. They are almost making they they this sort of push thing that anybody takes anything any alternative medicine is a quack and just force feeding these boosters and I just think it's almost got, gotten to the point where it's a bit crazy now. Mm. And I've I sat back for a long time and I weighed up different evidence and different things and I sat back almost like with no opinion from the sidelines for a long time before I started to come into the opinions I have now. But um, it's to me it's clearly political. To me, there is this is totally it's clearly turned into a, a political a, a, a political pro- problem, and I just think the the it's outrageous and hypocritical that um, pharmaceutical companies and the medical industry in general have the cheek to say that they do not want to prescribe ivermectin and anticlonal um, antibodies. Uh, monoclonal antibodies to the general population because it can be like it's damaging information that or whatever when there's no side effects from taking ivermectin mm. in this, you know there's no side effects from taking it um and there's no side effects from taking monoclonal antibodies but for example there are massive side effects from taking painkillers on a regular basis mm. yeah you could like yeah anybody in the anybody in the uk or america or anywhere in mainland europe could go to a pharma pharma pharmacy right now you could you could buy several boxes of painkillers. You could go by the next day, buy several more. You know, painkiller addiction. People die from painkiller addictions every single day. Lots of people die from painkiller addictions or painkiller overdoses every day because they have quite bad um, s- side effects. Yeah. In the long term, it's like similar to being like a really bad alcoholic or mm. being a really bad um, mm. or taking you know some of, some of the illegal drugs that you take that have really long term health consequences. Like people die they can cause you to have heart attacks all sorts of things liver failure kidney damage so how can the medical industry have the cheek to say oh no don't take ivermectin because it could be bad for you or it could it's misinformation when there's no bad side effects from taking that right yet meanwhile as i said they don't they don't care about if you t- if you took a load of for instance there's there's um there's evidence that if you take sulpidine on a regular basis Sulpidine, what's that? So it's like um, it's just like a it's a painkiller. Oh, okay. it's a common painkiller. Like pain you could, anybody right. could buy it in a supermarket mm, or a pharmacy. Right. There's there's um like concrete evidence that shows that if you take it on a regular basis, and I can't remember what the criteria for regular basis was. I think it was like fortnightly. So I'm not. I don't mean you have to be taking it four or five times a day. Mm. I think it's, if you take it like fortnight, then it can have long term damage on your heart. Mm. Increase your chances of like stroke and heart disease and stuff like that. Well. Well, no, no one talks about that. They don't care about that. The medical mm. industry don't care about that. Yeah, it's so, just like what's accepted and what's not accepted. So, you know, yeah. So this, so idea. I just think when you weigh up all this evidence, it, it's just, it's just weird. Mm. I just think, and like the fact that yeah, all these people are trying to like cancel Joe Rogan and silence him. Mm. I, I just think it's crazy. I think I actually think it's disgusting. Mm. I think it, I actually would mm. go as far as I actually mm. think it's disgusting. I said the, um, and I said Dana White almost like said the same thing. He said, you know. If you want to get pain pills, um, and also what's what's strange is, right, both monoclonal antibodies and ivermectin, before people started taking it as treatment for um, for COVID, right, and obviously most, you know, the people that did take it, you know, got better quite quickly, obviously Joe Rogan being one, and Dana White, these are both guys that are in their 50s, Mm. you know, and got well within days of Mm. having COVID, right? Um, It used to be a really cheap, an accessible drug it was one of those things that like people didn't really ever need to take it so it was very uncommon Mm. to have it but you could get ivermectin on the internet or at a pharmacy or from your doctor like cheap and quick you know you wasn't one of those things Mm. that you have to be like a millionaire to Mm. get what's weird is and this is just seems a bit fishy to me and I, i i challenge anybody listening to this to go actually look for themselves 
Go and try and find some ivermectin now. Mm. It's just, it just seems to just... The doors have been closed. It's like it's just been taken off the market all of a sudden. Mm. After after decades and decades and decades of anybody being able to stroll into the pharmacy And that's not because the online. demand's gone up and people have just like bought nope. loads of it and it's nope. run out of supplies. That's probably a, a small part of it, mm. but mainly it's almost like it's just been taken off the shelves. Whoa. Playing devil's advocate Why? for a second. Yeah. Um, could you say that maybe Joe Rogan and Dana White, you know, mm. fairly fairly he- healthy people, you would say? I don't think Dana White's probably Ma- healthy. Maybe not Dana White, but Joe Rogan. Like, yeah, he's a very healthy man. Very healthy mm. man. Would you say that perhaps they would have gotten over it that in that time anyway? Uh, well, you could say that. I mean, Joe Rogan doesn't didn't have any vaccines because he mm. was like, you know, he was he's a guy that's sort of like, you know, he's like, if you want to take the vaccine, take the vaccine. But you mm. know, if I don't want to take the vaccine, then that's my leave me alone. Then, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like you shouldn't in, inhibit my rights yeah. as a human being. Yeah, the only person that's that has totally sovereignty right, over you is you. Mm. Mm. So you know, as long as you're abide, um, abiding by laws in terms of like, you know, you're not killing anyone, you're not raping anyone. Mm. You're not, you know, smuggling guns or anything like that. It's like clearly things you shouldn't do in life. Mm. Then you should be able to do. You should be able to do whatever you want in life, really. Mm. You know. Um, at the end of the day, yeah, he does work out often, but he was completely unvaccinated, and he got better in what three days. Mm. Mm. And that was after consulting. Um, <laughs> Did better so, than me. <laughs> huh? Did better well, yeah. than me. Yeah, yeah. And you're 18 years old, no. and you're not exactly like obese or got diabetes or anything like no, that. Do you no. know what I mean? Like, I'd, quite, I'd like to say I'm quite healthy. Quite <laughs> the opposite, especially in the obesity section or like you know um, area. Um, but I mean, you know, maybe he would have gotten better in three days anyway. But I mean, he's obviously spent a ridiculous amount of hours. Obviously, the benefits of being someone like Joe Rogan is you have. When you have the biggest podcast in the world, mm. people want to go on it. Yeah. So he has had like... A, and you've got a, so many contacts just within the industries and all of that kind of stuff as well, you know. So if you want to reach out to like top class scientists and doctors that are going to give you the real information, mm. then they're going to go, I'll tell you what, Joe, if you really want to get better quickly, then just between me and you, take mm. this. Mm. Or maybe not even mm. just between me and you. Maybe mm. some, of, some of them are like almost have gone like rogue, so mm. to speak, by the mainstream media's eyes by this point of view. But the, it seems that the mainstream media's tactic is just to call everyone quacks mm. and let's face it most people believe it and maybe maybe some of them are but i definitely don't think the majority of them are how can you be a top field how can you be a doctor on top of your field all your life a scientist and then one day just because you have a an opinion that's slightly different to somebody else's which you've come to from rational thinking using evidence that's laid out before you how can all of a sudden you be deemed a quack and mm. how can that be mm. like acceptable or make sense to be called a quack you know because it's challenging the norm. Quite yeah. quack. <laughs> mm. it, I don't know. I think, as I said, like I don't, I don't like talking about the whole COVID thing because, as I said, the media is oversaturated with it. But I just feel like, I feel like when you're Quite having a poignant topic. Yeah, and yeah, I feel like when Joe when Rogan. you've yeah, got when you've so. got somebody like Joe Rogan is almost like trying to be like targeted and silenced. Mm. It's also like the CNN. Yeah, I really didn't realize that that mm. he was that they were actually trying to shut down. It's his almost like they're, yeah, they're trying to shut him down. They're trying to make him look bad. And it's like you can tell it's just because normally. We, as a general population, are slaves to, you know, big corporations and stuff like that. Whereas, because Joe Rogan's almost, he's not. He's almost built his own corporation. Yeah, um, and he's almost know. like, and as I said, his his podcast is bigger than any news outlet or anything yeah. like that. So, like, I love that so much. I love it as well. Because so it's like someone no that power. you actually trust and someone that I, I, when when I think of Joe Rogan, I think of like integrity. Mm. Like mm. he does believe he does have opinions. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he's very, he, he's very know, moral. Yeah, he's very moral, and, and and he listens to both sides, and he makes his own mind I, up I, and doesn't push yeah. that on other people. Um, so yeah, for someone like that to become so like powerful in the mm. media industry, like I think that's amazing because it get, it's like light, it's like a it's like a beacon of light for us mm. to think like oh there is actually places where I can go where I'm going to get an informed opinion rather than an agenda, you know, yeah. and that's mm. so important nowadays because it just doesn't happen enough, you know. Yeah, it's like, you know, I wouldn't agree with Joe Rogan on everything he says. I'd agree with no. most of the things he says, because in my opinion, he's a, he's a decent guy and, and a rational human being. And I think that if you do try and be a decent human being and you do just try and look at facts, then you're probably going to, you know, you're going to agree or at least respect the other person's opinion most of the time. Mm. Mm. So, you know, but as I said, because he's a decent chap, I don't need to agree with him on everything. No. Because we would we, we, we could we could sit in a room life, yeah. and have a beer together and have mm. a really good time without just silencing the mm. other one which is like mm. where did this silencing thing even come from mm. do you know what I mean when did this thing start becoming well, it's acceptable like censorship that? isn't it yeah it's but it's just like where did that why did that come from all of a sudden such a wide yeah mm. 
such a widespread thing now. Like, oh, they don't have the same opinion from me, so they should be cancelled. They need to be silenced. It's like, well, well says who? Mm. 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 Says who? What? Just because you don't agree with it? Mm. Well, there's lots of other people that do, and truth is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. So, it's just crazy, man. It's just it's mm. a very sort of Nazi way of thinking. I don't like it. You know, it's a very very Nazi. Yeah, way of it's thinking. like because it because that it, it's hard sometimes because certain things you w- won't want to hear about or like do you know what I mean? Like I can I can understand why th- some things would not be allowed to be broadcast if it was about like horrible subjects. Like, like what? Give me an example. Um, like. Like like extremist um, like political propaganda. Oh, okay. Like so, like if you like know, say like, like the KKK. Yeah, you or know, there's like things Islamic that I. There's thing, yeah. So there's things that I. Yeah, you obviously don't think, want to be giving airtime to that. No, but 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 this is what I mean. Like so, this freedom of speech mm. thing. Certain things would, in my opinion, would like have to be censored or like um, you know I don't I I think pushing those kind of agendas and those things is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. But these people who are censoring people like Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. they think that that's dangerous on that level and i don't do you know what i mean no of course this is what i mean it's like it's like you do have i do believe you do have to draw this line somewhere in like in in censorship you can't just say Mm. absolutely everything but to me that would be almost Mm. be clear Mm. in terms of like um, morality yeah so obviously don't give airtime to the kkk or islamic extremists but um once they commit a crime that's a, 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 that's a crime that any one of us could get arrested for, then they should face legal action. Mm. Simple as that. Mm. They should be reprimanded. You mm. know, if you, if you are a KKK member and you string up a black guy, then mm. you should be arrested this is it. and people, put on trial. People, fe- people feel you know? like so threatened by certain things that are talked about and call it like um, pseudoscience. And I mean, because it happened yeah. to Graham Hancock yeah, yeah, as well, yeah. you know, when he did that TED Talk. And the TED Talk got, and he was talking about ayahuasca on, um, on a TED Talk. It got taken down as um, as pseudoscience, mm. and then it blew up on the internet and went. So this is another thing. I th- I think if something is like has got truth in it and is um is it, you know. Uh, you make a martyr of somebody. That's what it's called. Yeah, like so. It's like it, w- it will blow up. It yeah. will it blow rises up. Rises to the top. Yeah, that, you know. So, so like more what, people shared it because it got cancelled. That's almost you know like what, what I mean? happened. And I think that would that's what would happen with Joe Rogan as well. Yeah. It would be like if you know if he was silenced, then it would be, you know so many people too would be big like, to no. be silenced. That, that's yeah. that's mm. almost like what happened with Gandhi and also with like JFK and loads of other people through history as well. So what you end up doing is making martyrs of people. So the idea is like. Oh, I don't like that person. I don't like their message, so I'm just going to assassinate them. For example, mm. well, then actually, in a way, that. when you when you kill them, you're making them more powerful. Mm. It's like what Obi Wan Kenobi mm. says yeah, in, in Star Wars. It's like yeah. if you strike me down, I'll become more powerful <laughs> than you could have possibly imagine. Mm. But it's almost like true because that's almost like the bit that the suddenly ev- of someone. everyone wakes yeah, up it's and like, it's like, oh, oh, whoa, oh, that, whoa, no. whoa. Yeah. like <laughs> this is actually that's suddenly blown up. Well, whoever that person's message was has mm. now blown up a thousand fold. Mm. Whereas if you'd actually just left them to it. It'd probably just fizzle, fizzle down. Mm. That's how I feel about this Joe Rogan thing because I didn't mm. know about it. Yeah. But, not, but like, it's really making me like, whoa! Like, I can't believe that's happening. But like, even yeah. more like, all right, I know he's onto something then. <laughs> yeah, as I said, like, I'm not the sort of guy that usually like, I don't I don't share like political opinions or I, you know I'm a very like live and let live sort of guy. It bothers me when I see people like aggressively and in my opinion quite often foolishly throwing around like opinions and and, and stuff like that, which often aren't aren't well researched enough anyway. Um, but I think sometimes it's like, where do you draw the line, you know, when it's almost like your obligation to actually say something, mm. you know, because mm. there's we everyone has that line or at least mm. if you don't, you need to make. Yeah, one, you, you know? know, you know where it is on the inside. Yeah. 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 I think you sometimes it's like, is. you know, you, you know that it's the right thing to do to almost like to, to, I know that to, I know that it's wrong to not support people like Joe Rogan and things like that. If mm. we didn't have people like Joe Rogan in the world, then. I don't know. I actually think it would be like a bit of a scary place, you know. Mm. Mm. And I think the problem with um, is what you were saying, like um, you know about the you know he's you, why you're such a fan of the fact that it's just like he is like bigger than any news outlet, and it's like a common issue that you, it's a common criticism of um of governments nowadays of both the American government, British government, is that there's too many people involved. Mm. So with Joe Rogan podcast, it's like okay, well who's who's running the Joe Rogan podcast? Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan. So who's held accountable? Joe Rogan mm, mm, you know mm. who decides everything Joe Rogan so it's like if ever there's an issue mm. there's one guy that you can go to and he is ho- ho- like wholly 
to be held accountable mm. for mm. everything. Yeah, he's completely responsible for everything. The problem with governments are, and with large scale, large scale corporations, is that you get lost in the... Well, it's like anyone, you know when you have like a complaint, whether it's like ringing up Sky or mm. you ring up Curry's oh, because you, your fridge hasn't been delivered. Yeah. And suddenly it's like you're put on hold. Oh, you need to speak to this person. You speak to this, and you're just like... It's going like, around the people. Whereas, say, if you rang a local company yeah. that delivered just fridges, oh, you could speak to the guy that runs the company and you'd yeah. go, oh, I'm so sorry that was that mess up. We'll get on it right now, half an hour later. Yeah. It's, it's that. This is what I'm talking about. So Joe Rogan is the local company mm. and the governments and everything are those big corporations. DPD. That, 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 yeah, DPD, <laughs> Sky. You know, when you ring up, you've got an issue with Sky. Oh, DPD. Um, <laughs> you know, and it's like you just go in, you're going around in circles. It's like anytime there's an issue with the government, you know, it's like, well, you know, the prime minister or the president should be held accountable. Oh, yeah, but it's not really him. It's his, it's his cabinet. And yeah. or somebody in his, mm. somebody in his cabinet did this. And it's like, okay, well then they should be held accountable. And then they go, no, it's not my fault. It's their yeah. fault. And then it's you like, you can just hide behind all of those things. So you know? it's, it's really bad. So mm. I'm, I'm, I'm like a big believer in, you know, we should be downscaling governments. Mm. There should be mm. a lot less people involved. Um, you know, and then, and then people can truly be held accountable. Mm. truly be held accountable and it's really important to be held accountable both as individuals and you know for everything everything in life you know mm. if you can't hold somebody accountable then you've got a problem mm. if things if bad things are going wrong you got and trouble and there's no yeah, yeah and there's nobody to hold accountable for it <laughs> then you've got some troubles <laughs> you've got some troubles brewing people you've got some troubles everywhere and for those people that don't know what a trouble is mm-hmm. right when you times the the devastation of a trouble with a problem then you get troubles, <laughs> and that's way more catastrophic than either a trouble <laughs> or a problem. Mm. Okay, the world's full of troubles at the moment. So anyway, mm. I think you know we should stop talking about that today. As I said, there's an, too much talk about freaking COVID in the world at the moment. You know, mm. um, we're going to listen to this song now. This is "Creep" by Stone Temple Pilots. All those little creeps trying <laughs> to get Joe Rogan banned. Mm. And when we come back, we're going to talk about something cool like the Colossus of Rhodes. <laughs> I used to be the man I used to be. That was Creep by Stone Temple Pilots. That was a, a staple of the early to mid 90s grunge scene. Obviously, Stone Temple Pilots, one of the biggest grunge bands, along with obviously Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, and most famously, Nirvana! Nirvana! Um. Ah. I want to talk a little bit about the Colossus of Rhodes, for anybody that doesn't know about it. Do you guys know much about the Colossus of Rhodes? Tell me. Enlighten me. It was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world back in the day. Awesome. So it was an epic statue. I love these. It was an epic statue of the Greek sun god Helios. (sighs) Helios. 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 Um, It was um, erected in the city of Rhodes on the Greek island of the same name, by Charles of Lindos in 280 BC. Ooh, long time ago. Um, it was constructed to celebrate the successful defense of Rhodes against an attack by Demetrius Poliorcetes, who had besieged Rhodes for a year with a large army and navy. According to contemporary descriptions, the Colossus of Rhodes stood 108 feet tall. Colossus. That is mega, isn't it? Approximately the height of the Statue of Liberty today. Big building. Making it the tallest statue in all of the ancient world. It collapsed during an earthquake in 226 BC, okay. although most, although parts of it were preserved. In accordance with a certain oracle, the Rhodians did not build it again. John Malalas wrote that Hadrian, in his reign, re-erected the Colossus, but he was mistaken. According to the Suda, the Rhodians were called Colosseans because they erected the statue on their island, which is quite an epic name, isn't it? In 653 AD, an Arab force under Muslim general Muawaya I conquered Rhodes, and according to the chronicle of Theopanes, the confessor, the statue was then completely destroyed and the remains were sold as scraps. Since 2008, a series of as yet unrealized proposals to build a new Colossus at Rhodes ha- Harbour have been announced, although the actual location of the original monument respe- remains in dispute. Mm. But I always just think that's so, so cool because it was basically it was um it was almost like at the docks facing out to sea, mm. and I just think like imagine um imagine back in those days like 280 BC, just imagine being in a ship 
um and like coming into this like obviously it's like a coming be- from uh, a far land yeah and it's yeah. like it would have been a beautiful place anyway because for anybody that's been mm. to greece like all of the beaches like white sandy beaches just like turquoise sea it's absolutely beautiful it's mm. my favorite sea i've ever uh, swam oh, in nice i love swimming in the sea and it's just like yeah i think that's probably my favorite sea i've ever swam in like um, off crete i've never actually been to Rhodes, but i assume it's pretty similar mm. but i think it would have been beautiful anyway and then just imagine the awe of just seeing this 108 feet tall Mm. statue mm. of this sun god and i think it's like one of those things that like when you say 108 it's feet awesome, tall yeah. i think that you almost like you can't appreciate it until you see it like yeah 108 yeah. feet is so so massive so massive you know i love that idea i think they should rebuild all of the ancient wonders because the only one that still stands is the pyramids of giza right but they I should think there's a few more ah uh, right well they, they should rebuild all the ones that are fallen mm. that'd be a good thing for us to talk about actually sometime yeah out of the original wonders of the world you know which ones are still standing because mm. I'm not actually 100 percent sure. I think I think there's more than I, I think, think there might be an Aztec one that's still standing. Maybe or mm. Mm, yeah. Isn't, isn't sure. the Wall of China like Great um, Wall of China? Great Wall of China. I like, think it oh, might be. Right. I think it well. might be. I think I, I'm, I is, is Stonehenge one of them. I have a feeling Stonehenge might be one of them. Mm. Obviously Stonehenge is still standing. I'm not 100 percent sure. Lighthouse I, of Alexandria. That Hanging was that was one of, of the original ones. Obviously that fell mm. because we talked about that before. Yeah, the Hanging Gardens Babylon was definitely one. The Greek statue that you just talked about. Yeah, the Colossus of Rhodes. Yeah, I said we'll we'll have to um we'll have to have a little uh, look into it. Dig around. A little look into it. And uh, yeah, because that would actually be a really interesting thing to talk Mm. about. I think. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Do you have a a question for today? Question of the day. Question of the day, young Bullwinkle. I do. I do. Uh, I feel like a lot of the past ones have been very philosophical. Yeah, philosophical, thoughtful. Um, but this week. Uh, it, it's it's not really gone down that line. Basically, would you rather right. have no elbows <laughs> or no kneecaps? Or have discuss. no elbows or no kneecaps? Mm. Um, that's a weird <laughs> question, man. That's a weird question. I reckon... Man, that's a really weird question. What are you thinking? I'm, I'm going to say no <laughs> kneecaps. No, but only, I th- only I think no kneecaps as well. Just just because like mm. you look at these like cra- people that have had um you know these horrible accidents or been in the war and stuff and had mm. like you know legs blown off and everything. They um that you can get prosthetic limbs mm. and walk on them pretty well. Mm. But your hands are mm. so important. I think playing the guitar, Dexter- mm. dexterity, all of that stuff like playing the guitar, oh, gardening. Yeah. I would never want them to not be yeah. working. Think <laughs> think of like just everyday like skills and tasks. Mm. It'd be annoying for like getting about like with your knees and with these weirdly straight legs. <laughs> mm. If I had to like create <laughs> like for, like, the rest man. of my life without uh, without legs, I could still play some. You cool would just guitar. sit down. On, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. just sit down on a nice comfy chair. Mm. I think I. Uh, I think the right <laughs> answer is probably no kneecaps. But yeah, I think no kneecaps. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, it's agree. quite a funny image of having I was, no, I was ex- no elbows. I was well. expecting <laughs> like a really like in depth, as I said, philosophical question, and then just what would you rather have? <laughs> no elbows or no kneecaps? Mm-hmm. That's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna listen to another track now. This is Better Man by Pearl Jam. Love this one. In- that was Better Man by Pearl Jam. Oh yeah. I saw something real freaky the other day with Elon Musk talking about AI. Um, so I wanted to play it here on Pandora's box. Um, it's just there's something a bit chilling about it and it, obviously it makes sense. Mm. But I watched it and then I was like, man, I really think that people need to be a bit more careful with the whole AI situation because one minute you're having fun in games saying like, Alexa, play me some Bon Jovi. And then the net, while you're making your freaking, you know, calzone or whatever. Mm. The next, you're calzone. Playing, you're the next bon minute, Jovi for it. And the next, <laughs> yeah, the next minute, for a kid, yeah, this is you playing Bonjo for it. <laughs> the next minute, Terminator, cue Terminator music. Dun 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 dun. So this is what he said. This is my. You have to be evil to destroy humanity. If AI has a goal and humanity just happens to be in the way, it will destroy ma- humanity as a matter of course without even thinking about it. No hard feelings. Mm-hmm. It's just like if we're building a road and an anthill happens to be in the way. We don't hate ants. We're just building a road. And so goodbye, anthill. <laughs> that was like such a, like a simple clip, I thought, but just almost mm. like quite chilling. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It just makes a lot of sense. Do you know what I mean? Because I think a lot of people almost like think that it would have to get to the point where like AI for some reason had almost like this malicious atten- intent against us. Mm. But it wouldn't. 
No. no, no as you said, like when we, no. if, if you destroy an anthill to build a road, mm. we don't hate the ants. It's just in mm. the way. Mm. Mm. So, like, that's the problem, I think, as well. When you, I mean, let's face it, we have really strong emotions and we still don't care. Mm. But if you had something that had vast intelligence like way way smarter than even the most intelligent person on the world mm. in the world because they just have access to unlimited information mm. because they're constantly just linked up to the internet well then but you have that amount of information but with no emotion attached to it mm. then that's almost like a scary proposition well, it's, it's crazy if it's like if you give a robot it's it's sole purpose in life it's sole purpose mm. to spread butter yeah right and then you took the butter away from it, hmm. right? It, that robot would then do everything in its power, and it doesn't matter if you get in the way. Hmm. Like it will do everything. To start in its spreading butter. Or, 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 or like imagine, butter. imagine if you, um, imagine if you told AI to sort out um, climate change and, hmm. and all the pollution issues. They would mm. probably just destroy humanity because they'd be like, well, it's humanity that's been mm. happened. Do you know mm. what I mean? And then sure. even though we are its creators, because it wouldn't have any match, it, like, it's not like it would see us like we see our parents. It wouldn't have any emotional attachment mm. because I don't think there would be a way, as far as I know, there's not a way that you would be able to like accurately replicate, replicate emotions mm. in mm. a machine. So it's yeah. like, if they just destroyed us and then they would just almost like be left on this world, that would probably be like quite green and luscious with all the animals and stuff, but then also with these weird Terminators just running things. Mm, for sure. <laughs> crazy, isn't it? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, I, like, our human perspective is just our human perspective, isn't it? Like, mm. there's there's nothing else that has the same thing. So, it, you know what I mean? If it's completely different from us, it's just, it would just be that. It would just be what it is, you know? I think, I think the creepy bit is like the fact that there's no, you can't reason with it. No. There's mm. no way to reason with a robot. No, that's mm. what that's almost that's, that's literally a line in Terminator. Says no. Oh right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's literally like almost like a line. Oh, cool. I remember. I think. I think it's a bit there. where Sarah Connor's talking to John Connor. I think, and she's like, "Yeah, talking about you know it, why Terminators are so scary because yeah, you can't reason with it. Mm. It's just got like an objective, and it's almost yeah. like how cold it is. It's like it doesn't hate you. It doesn't want to kill mm. you because it hates you or anything. It's just it hasn't got hate. It's this weird right. cold yeah. objective. It's like to mm. you, to do it. So you are almost like. You are just like almost like a, pi- a piece of that bacteria that just needs to be eradicated like a disease. Mm. That's a freaky thought, man. I think one of the things I find really freaky as well, and I've, I've heard Elon Musk talk about before, and I think I heard about, um, oh, what's his name? Really, really smart guy. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson? No, 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 not Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, I'll, I'll think of his name at some point. Anyway, um, it was Elon Musk and a couple of other people I've heard speaking about it, and they were saying the scary thing about um, AI is people th- a lot I think a lot of people think that it will happen like very very gradually and almost like in that sort of way of thinking there's like a bit of comfort because you think oh well it couldn't happen overnight mm. but Elon Musk was saying like it literally could happen overnight because mm. that what it will happen is it's like AI oh, gets a bit a bit more intelligent AI gets a bit more intelligent it gets a little bit more intelligent and then it would just get to a point where all of a sudden it gets intelligent enough. All it needs is to be intelligent enough to take initiative and then it can mm-hmm. just download every single bit of information off the internet and then instantly it will be like the most powerful yeah. entity yeah. on the planet. Mm-hmm. Like way more powerful than any government, any military. Mm. And it's like that could just happen like that mm. all of a sudden. Mm. And almost like we're like slowly pushing towards that all the time. And almost just like we're only f- focusing on like how it benefits us, like how it's called to have an Alexa What's or how it's called to have a computer in mm. your car or... But it's like, man, you need to, we need to be careful with that, man. Wasn't once... there a robot that was like, almost like made to like look like humans and just talk to humans, almost like a real life Alexa? And then it like once made a joke about like killing humanity. Oh, like I made saw, a joke I about it, and that. they got shut down. That. Like mm. they just shut down the robot. Mm. I have actually heard something about that before. Yeah. That is creepy, man, isn't it? We'll have yeah, to play it wasn't that. so direct, but it was like indirectly saying, really? but like as a mm. joke or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, whoa, you shouldn't be sinister, making jokes man. like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's you gone a bit too real. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut you, it down, shut it down. <laughs> yeah, you just don't, you just don't want to hear a, com- a, a robot making those sort of jokes. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Have yeah. you seen that like new AI, AI platforms that like make songs and make paintings and stuff? No. Oh, oh no! You yeah, well, you talked about it. A little yeah, bit I was earlier. showing you a little bit earlier. It's so cool. I don't even like this. Mm. It's I know. So you, cool. I know it is cool, but I don't like it. So there's mm. this app called like Wombo by Dream. <laughs> Pretty funny. Mm. Wombo. Wombo. But um, you can put like any word or phrase. Yeah. And it will like scour the internet and like you choose like a setting like dark fantasy, fancy sketching that kind of thing, and it will like basically just paint you 
like a painting based off of what yeah you i don't said, like that i don't like off that of the knowledge it can gain to me it. that's almost like that's already too much in intellect for my mm. like and like the thing is you can, much you initiative. can you can tell as well that it's like not you you can tell that it is actually taking it from the internet because my girlfriend was doing them she had like autumn court yeah uh, summer court and like each one would perfectly like represent what you would think that word to be so mm. interesting but knowledge um, is power i also saw like a <laughs> A clip on Instagram of like a song that got made uh, with like Jay Z, I think Biggie, um, Tupac, yeah, Kanye West, just with like AI, just like making mm. a song with them. I don't like that either. Voices, <laughs> pretty crazy. Power corrupts, and ultimate power corrupts. It's getting I know, was it absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm. That's a good, such a good saying. I yeah, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> that's a good saying isn't it I heard yeah. that from Christopher Lee mm. cool I think he was talking about Saruman in an interview oh Power I corrupts. watched Lord of the Rings fir- the first Lord of the Rings no oh. way what fellowship that's thing. yeah fellowship Mate, of the ring how good is that so cool how good is it I though? just want to watch the next one now what was your favourite part of it oh man my favourite part the Balrog the Nazgul uh, I did quite like the Balrog that was that's quite cool. epic isn't oh, it oh the Balrog cool. um, shall not and there's yeah. this giant demon. Mm-hmm. I just demon like I like watching them like fight the fight the orcs. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So cool. I like and like when they're on Weathertop and obviously like the hobbits are getting attacked by the ring race. And yeah, that's Aragorn one of my favorite comes bits. in yeah. with like a flaming torch and his sword, and then mm-hmm. that's so drives cool. him off. He like yeah, yeah, throws yeah, yeah. the Frodo torch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like cool. with a Morgul blade. Been stabbed by a Morgul blade. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting for my dad to get back from work. Because he's working away at the we're moment. Gonna watch two towers. When he gets back, we're going to watch two towers. <laughs> Mate, you are, you are in for a treat, in man. For a journey. You're going to see the, the greatest. Is it the extended version? It better be. Um, Mate, if you're not watching the extended edition. I don't know. Mm. Right, well, it was from, like three hours. From well, now on, might be, yeah. you need to watch the extended. If it's not, make sure cool. it's the extended edition, all right? It's a long movie, regardless. Yeah, <laughs> make, make sure it is. But two towers has the greatest battle scene of all time in oh, anything awesome. ever. Oh. Isn't that the one where that, they recorded the clips from like an arena and got all the all the people to chant in the stadium i'm not and sure they, like use that as sounds like something they would do yeah they use That's that so as like cool. foley for like an audience or like a an army mm. all right so t- cool. time's up time's, gotta up. Go. time's up guys oh my. cheers everyone that's it bye bye. Us again next week on <laughs> pandora's box it's been cool chatting to you i said tune in next week have a good week everyone cheers bye this is enough space by few fighters have a good evening y'all <laughs>